Hi, I'm Murray Deeker. He's the thunder from down under, the greatest boxer to ever come out of Australasia. He won three world titles, and yet the thing we'll always remember about him is a draw that he had. Jeff Fennick, we were robbed that day, Las Vegas. What was the date again? Uh, I was back in 91, June, I think, 28th. You'll never forget it, will you? Yeah, but, you were robbed, Jeff, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I feel that uh, I was hard done by, but um, things happen in life for a reason. I believe that uh, throughout my life, uh, there's a little wheel, that's what I believe in, what goes around comes around. And, um, maybe um, from being a bad boy when I was young, that happened to me when I was a little older, but I'm a much better person for it today, Murray. It's an experience for me, and uh, although I still think about and talk about it a lot to people, because they always ask about it, I feel that I'm a whole lot better person and a wiser person for that experience. What do you think of Zuma Nelson got out of it? You met him later and you've had a bit to do with him since. You must have discussed the fight with him. Oh, he knows that I won. Uh, yeah, although he's, uh, you know, he's proud, he's a great, great champion, great person outside of the ring, and, uh, but he really knows that I won the fight. And although it's you know, sometimes hard for him to admit it, I mean, uh, all he has to do is watch a video and if anybody can watch it and think they won, he's been hit more times in the head than I thought he has been. Jeff, Don King, what did you say to him after the bout? Because by Joe's, I remember how frustrated you were. And I told him to F off when he came near me, but um, I feel it's sad that people like that are involved in such a great sport. I mean, people love boxing, and I think the sooner we clean it up and clean the act of the entire sport up, and uh, from amateur level all the way to professional level, uh, you know, the better the sport will be, but like I said, it's it's such a sport with so much money and so many free trips around that um, it draws those uh, those bad people to it. Um, you know, when you look at you look at the sport, and you look at boxers. I mean, 99.9% .9 of boxers, maybe 100% of us come from come from the streets and come from nothing, and, um, and we're able to 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 get so much. You can become rich and famous and. Here are some of these other people, like the Don Kings and some of these people like the Arthur Tunstalls who also see an opportunity to, to jump on our backs. You'd put Arthur Tunstall in the same category as Don King? Oh, without doubt, maybe worse. Why know, is that? No, I just think that uh, he's again everything that represents uh, bad in the sport of amateur boxing. I mean, he's been around for a long, long time. I believe that in life, if, if you perform, uh, uh, you, you, you should be judged on performance, Murray. I mean, if I do a job for you and I don't do a will, you're going to say to me, Jeff, look, you, know, you can't do this, and that's it. I mean, Arthur Tunstall's been involved in amateur boxing for years and years. We've never had a good result. The only time we've had results is because we've had a talented boxer. Never through, you know, unearthing him, never through putting him through a proper, pro uh, a proper training program. So I think it's time that Arthur and p the people who have any um, intestine, or, you know, anything... Guts. Yeah, any guts. Go and just say, look, Arthur, you know, your time's up. I've had no results. It's time for you to leave. Similar to Don King. I mean, he's done nothing good for the sport. And whenever there's something adverse uh, in the sport of boxing, Don King's involved. And I mean, if it happens once, maybe you can you can forgive them twice, maybe. But when it happens a hundred times and it's the same person all the time, it's time for somebody to stand up and say, look, you know, you're not welcome in this sport. You're not needed. It's not the only controversial decision that went against you. You represented this country at the Olympics and you got a real upset decision. This time the judges went with you and the jury went against you. Yeah, I mean, usually um, that's all you need to, to be on your sides, the judges. Um, at this Olympics in 1984, Los Angeles, the same Olympics as Kevin Barry from New Zealand represented, um, they introduced an international jury. Again, a scam for some all the people who have been around amateur sport for a long time to get a free trip. And um, these people happened to, to sit further away than the judges did, and uh, they scored the fight as well. They scored the fight differently to the judges, so they overruled the judges, these guys, because our older was, were deemed to have more experience. But Jeff, there are some good blokes in the game. You mentioned the name of one of them. Are you a friend of Kevin's? Oh, great person. One of, the, one of the nice guys in the sport of boxing. He always wants to help people. He uh, loves to be around the sport and it's, there's a, it's a pity there aren't more people like him. I'm sure that if he was a promoter that he would be fair. I mean, you know, I'd love to see you know, the day that he done something because I know that he's been there and done it and he knows uh, how to treat people. And I think that is um, quite uh, common knowledge all around the world. Anybody that deals with Kevin Barry gets a fair go. How did it all start for you? <clears throat> Tell us about the first time you thought, gee, I'm going to have a crack at this. Well, I never, I never thought I wanted to box, and uh, I went to the police youth club one day, and I went there with a, another bit of a street hood, and he was looking for somebody up there that he wanted to, to beat up on. So 
I was there as a part of the support team, Murray, and then <clears throat> we never found that guy. But as I was walking through the premises searching, I looked through a little uh, window in the boxing room, and uh, it was on the door, a little glass window, and um, I seen a young guy there that played in my footy side who was, wasn't a real good football player, but was always up on the dice at school getting awards for boxing, Australian champion, national champion, state champion, and I thought, I could beat him up, you know, you know. And as I looked in the window that day, he was boxing, so I said, I want to go and watch, you know. Um, I sat down and I watched for about 10 minutes, and after he'd finished doing what he was doing, I heard the trainer talk about how he'd love to have somebody there that he could spar with because there was no boxers there. And I, I'll put my hand up, I'll beat this kid up. Um, if you need somebody to box him, I'll box him. You know, I said, if the trainer said, if you've had a fight before. I said, no, I said, but I can fight, you know, I fight in the street and whatever. And the trainer said, look, you know, you can't do that, just walk into the gym. I said, no, nah, man, trust me, I'll, I'll be all right. Well, after about the first minute of the round, trust me, I wasn't all right. This guy who I thought that I could beat up, well, I was quite sure that I could beat up in the street, had winded me and really beat me up badly. And I thought that, phew, you know, this was tough, but <clears throat> being the... Tenacious little guy that I was, I went back and done another round and then done another round. As I uh, had done enough, I told the trainer, oh, thank you for letting me do that. And I didn't really mean it because I thought that, you know, it was a bit rough. But uh, he asked me if I had fought and I said, no, I hadn't. And uh, he said, was I interested in going back there the next day? And that was it, Murray. I went there the next day, the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day for, for 10 years or so. And that was the start of the very long relationship that you had with Johnny Lewis. It's been a good relationship, hasn't it? Oh, it's been great. We had a little bit of a rocky road over the last year or so, but um, everything's patched up now. And I mean, John's like a dad to me, and um, it's just so important to have, I mean, in, in our sport, a father-son relationship with, with your boxer. I think, you know, um, having a good relationship and being very, very close to the boxer is very, very important because you've got to really trust that guy that's sending you out in the ring. Uh, you know, anything can happen out there and sometimes he does have uh, the life of you in, in his hands. So you've got to really trust him and be very, very close. That relationship between the trainer and the boxer, I'll, I want to really dwell on that. Does the guy live with you? Does he breathe with you? Does he take the whole thing for you? Well, just about. I've just started training and sometimes I feel sorry for my wife, I have my guy. We run together in the morning. I feed him breakfast, I've got three kids and I do it for them. I feed him breakfast, make sure he takes his vitamins, make sure he's taking his medicines and uh, make sure he does everything. And then, you know, he comes back, I make sure he eats lunch and take him to the gym, have dinner here at home. So it's, I believe that to be successful, that's why I was with my trainer. And I believe that it made me successful and it made me feel really good, Murray. So I try to um, do the same with my young fighters. Jeff, part of the attraction of Jeff Fennick, fighter, is that you are what we've all thought a boxer should be. You're from the wrong side of the tracks, you've been a tough kid, and you've come through and all around you now, the trappings of wealth. It's really rags to riches stuff. Do you pinch yourself sometimes and think, gee, is this me? Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I, I remember um, I was getting $1,000 for a fight early and stuff like that, and I said to one of my friends, if I've ever got $20,000 in the bank, that's it for me. Well, 20 went to 100, 100 went to 2, and so on and so on. I mean, it's really hard to stop. And I mean, you know, uh, uh, you have success and you have money and you want more of it. Uh, but I, I, like I said, I've been lucky that I've invested my money wisely and um, I didn't make a lot of money early in my career, but towards the end I certainly uh, made up for that. And like I said, I've invested my money wisely and hopefully um, I'll be able to make sure that my little boy doesn't have to do what Jeff Fenwick done, and that's, you know, fight... Uh, to survive, I, you know, if my boy wants to box money, I'll let him box, but he certainly won't have to box for money. You made that point to me before we started this interview, that if you had a choice, you wouldn't have done it. This was the way to make it for Jeff Fenwick. Yeah, definitely. There was definitely um, the only other way that I was going to ever uh, get my hands on any large sum of money was robbing a bank or, or robbing some 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 way, robbing. And then, um, you know, lots of my friends are in jail today for for those crimes. I'm just very, very lucky that I met Johnny Lewis and very, very lucky that I was um, strong enough to, to say no to those things. And uh, when I started the train, I, I gave it 110%. And, uh, you know, unless you do that, you, you can't be successful. So I was, I was lucky, but then again, I, I worked very, very hard. And at the end of the day, I believe uh, in life, you, you know, you open your own doors and, uh, you know, you, you take risks and you go out and do things on your own. And I've done a lot of hard work on my own.
Jeff, when you say a lot of hard work, tell us about your training routine. Not hours and hours of it, was it? It was quick fire stuff that you were into. Yeah, Kevin Barry and them have watched me train and they testify that I, what, like, you know, if I work for half an hour, it's half an hour of, you know, basically more than you'll see a normal boxer or a normal fighter doing a couple of hours. Everything that I've done, I've done, I believe in quality, not quantity. And I, I worked as hard as I could. Like, I'd run 5K in 15 and a half minutes. I'd do my stomach work. And in the afternoon when I'd box, and although I wouldn't try to knock all my opponents out, but from the, from the time I started, like, when I'd box, I didn't care who it was, whether it was a young kid or, or, or an older kid, I'd put the same amount of pressure on that I'd think that I was going to uh, do in the fight. Or, or, or I'd uh, obviously, or, or actually, I would... Um, think that I was fighting and I'd do exactly what I was going to do, I'd rehearse my fight. And uh, a funny thing is, I was reading Michael Jordan's uh, biography and he said exactly the same thing. He said maybe the worst um, training camp that he's ever been in was when he went to the Olympics because he's with the dream team, they all had obviously big heads and they didn't train hard. He said when he goes out on the court to practice, he practices as if he's playing. And that's how I was in, uh, in my preparation in boxing and I always worked very, very hard. So quick fire training is, is the answer to the whole thing. Tell us about your toughest fight. Was it one of the ones against Nelson? Definitely not. Okay, I, honestly, what's the toughest? I can honestly say that Azuma Nelson um, is most probably the greatest fighter I fought on paper, but he was nowhere near the toughest. I fought a man named uh, Victor Kalagis for my third world title. And I admire him for this reason, Murray, because after the second round, he knew that he wasn't going to beat me. So from that time on, he headbutted me and broke this sexy nose of mine. He elbowed me every round. Like, he didn't even try to punch me. There were, there were punches just thrown, hit me with the elbow. He thumbed me down the eyes. He pushed his thumbs down my eyes. He choked me. He'd done everything he could possible, possibly to win. And, and I admire him. I say that was a tough one. I admire him because if that was me, I think that I would... I would try the same thing, you know, I'd do anything to win, I just wanted to be a winner, winning, you know, uh, was so important to me when I was a young kid, and I look at it these days, and uh, I think, you know, I try to tell kids, you know, winning is not the only thing anymore, so, you know, it's how you perform, as long as you give it your best, but um, my other toughest fight was against Marcus Villasana, another person who went the distance twice with Azuma Nelson, and uh, had very tough fights, he was a tough Mexican who gave me a, a very, very tough 12 rounds.